All right, we've got our Bluehost hosting set up and we've got our WordPress platform set up. It's all ready to go in there and put in our theme and actually design our site. Actually, go in to use the house analogy and decorate the wall, paint the walls, decorate it with furniture, however we need to. And so with that in mind, let's take a little break here and let's just talk about the do's and don'ts of designing your artist website. So the number one goal, and as with anything, we should go back to the number one goal. What, what do we want to accomplish? What's the number one thing we want to achieve with our website? Well, it's not social sharing. It's not, you know, making your grandmother proud of you, which is a great thing. But the number one goal of your website should be to begin and to nurture a relationship with your audience. Who is it that's buying your art? It's your audience. And as an artist, your audience is the most important business asset you have. And so to that end, your artist website should be a tool to, to not only get the attention of people, but to uh, filter in the people that are your audience, the people that love your work and want to share it and buy it, and then to continue that relationship with them. And I'll, we'll talk later specifically how to implement things on your site to make that happen. So everything else to that is secondary, fancy, flashy things that you might want to put on there. Um, you know, having other stuff that kind of detracts from your art, all that stuff that is secondary. So talking about the don'ts with that in mind, here are the don'ts of your artist website. Don't treat your website like an art piece of its own. I made this mistake early on. I was, when I was just kind of getting into web design, I was getting into flash and animation. And so I had this sort of elaborate animation when you first load up my site and it was kind of this, it was overwrought. And what I should have done was allow people in there really quickly to see my other animations. As it was, people couldn't hardly even get past what I had on there. So that was a mistake I had made. Don't do that. Let your art stand on its own. Also, don't clutter up your site with junk, just a bunch of stuff. Um, don't put ads on your site. Sometimes you go to artist websites and they have like ad words on there for something completely unrelated to your art. Don't do that. Don't have other, you know, useless stuff like trivia and for goodness sakes, don't play music when people first go to the site that really irritates people. So just make it, uh, don't just don't clutter up your site with needless things. Uh, also like me, don't have kind time consuming animations before your work appears. Sometimes you can get kind of crazy with intros and flashy things and even sliders that rotate to and fro, uh, animated GIFs. So if you do have those, have them just very tastefully and have them support the art. Don't, don't keep them from, don't keep, don't let them keep your audience from seeing your work and don't have a colored background. Just have a nice white or very neutral background. I really recommend white uh, until you, if you have a lot of high tone work, just use whatever background complements your art. So, you know, if you have, if you have a favorite, if your favorite color is like a brilliant purple, just let that be your favorite color. Don't let it be the background of your website. You don't need to make that statement and don't use a lot of different fonts. This isn't, um, you know, this isn't the mid 1990s when people just started going crazy with fonts on their computer, stick to two fonts, very clean, very, um, very minimalistic. And don't, for goodness sake, make your art so large that it loads slowly. Now, this surprises me. Even when I go to established artists' websites, their art just is so big that it loads really slowly. And a big mistake people make is they make their art, you know, very large, and then they scale it down in WordPress or in their website. That's a big mistake because even though it looks slow on the page, it's still loading that big, huge image. So you need to really optimize your images. All right, so on a more positive note, here are the do's of your artist website. Do make your website like a museum, a museum that shows your work in the best way possible. Think about a museum. You, every museum you go to, it's clean, it's really modern, it's really, um, it's really, uh, the architecture is all devoted to the walls, the blank walls, the nice, clean, white 
uh, neutral walls that show off the work in its best possible way. That's what you want your website to be. You want it to be like a museum that shows your art in the best possible light. You do want to give your visitors a pleasant experience. And there are several things that go into that. The clean design, like a museum, when you walk into a museum, it's just very pleasant. You look around and it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, you have plenty of white space. Don't cram everything together. Put space in between stuff. And also, fat. be sure that the website loads really quickly. Not only do you want this for your site's visitor, your visitor's uh, experience, you also want it for SEO, which that's a term that talks about how Google and other search engines find your site. And Google will actually punish a site when if the site loads too slowly. And so really you want your site to load in less than a second. I know that sounds quick, but the, at least that very first image you want to put front and center less than a second up on there, um, on that site. And to, yeah, to that end, you want to optimize those images to be sure they load very quickly. You don't want high res images, two high res images on your site anyway, because obviously people can take them and use them. Uh, there are ways to show detail and things that you want to show without having the whole image come up there. And then as we talked about in the don'ts, just use a maximum of two fonts. Pick two tasteful fonts. There are places online you can go to to help you with font choices if you're not really a designer. Um, use fonts that are very legible, clear, and easy to read, and only use a maximum of two. Offer plenty of information about your work, about uh, offer your prices, offer up information about you. So this may sound contradictory to the cluttering up, but this is not clutter. This is giving them all the information they need, your audience, your visitors to your site, to make a follow and eventually a purchasing decision about you. You have to be able to stand out in their minds, communicate what you're about. And some schools of thought say, don't put prices, make them get, well, that's ridiculous. You need to put your prices to your work. How many times have you gone into a store and you look around and you see something you maybe like, but you don't see a price tag on it. Not only is it irritating, but it makes you jump through needless hoops just to start the buying process. Put the prices on your work. Also, put plenty of information about you. Have an about me page that shows who you are, uh, some information that they need to get to know you better. And then finally, just overarching principle, give them a reason and give them an opportunity to further the relationship. And so the opportunity comes from filling out a form uh, that you may have on the site. All right, so our design mantra for our website should be, let your art be the main focus. Your art is the main focus of your site. Everything else, secondary. So this is a good example of a site right here. Just the art is front and center. It's very clean, lots of white space, neutral background. And then also don't forget the number one goal that we talked about earlier, which is to further the relationship with you. And you're going to do that by giving them a chance to leave their email on your site. So this is an example of a sign up to get a newsletter. So you want them to be able to sign up to see further work from you. And in this case, this is a good example of a case where they offer sneak peeks of new work before anyone else gets to see it and then exclusive online discount codes. So there are very rare instances when I would recommend artists discount their work, but this is one possible instance in order to be on your email, their email list to be able to contact them. It's fair to say to, you know, offer a discount for that or some other incentive. There are a variety of incentives you can offer. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. Suffice it to say, give them a chance to give, to leave their email, to show their interest and to further that relationship, which is the number one goal of your site. All right. So with those do's and don'ts in mind, I'm going to walk you through the next lesson, uh, through actually uploading our theme and adjusting our site and uploading uh, some I'm going to create an example website and upload some work. And so walk you step by step by step um, through creating an actual gallery site. And it's going to be pretty minimalistic. Uh, there's stuff you're going to want to do to it afterwards, but this will get you definitely get you started in the right direction.